Is it on? Great. Uh, welcome everybody to our weekly or thereabouts uh, live stream from uh, How to Repair Pendulum Clocks. Hope you're all having or had a uh, great Christmas, that everything is being kind to you and looking forward to New Year's celebrations and just that's good. Close out. And um, anyway, we've been busy here, uh, um, both on Facebook and in the background as well, doing our various different horological um, endeavors. So thanks to everybody on Facebook. It's been our first kind of full year uh, there. And obviously, maybe a few people are on holiday. So they've had a bit more time to dedicate to sharing their work in progress projects. So super um, big thank you uh, for, for all that. Really appreciated. That is the lifeblood of that channel. And sometime in January, we'll probably hit 2,000 members. So brilliant. If you don't know about that, then just Google how to repair Pendulum Clocks Facebook group and you will be very welcome. So Hi, Derek and Jeremy. And um, the past few weeks <laughs> slash months, it's been going on a long time. Um, we've been working on this clock by Ingram, or Ingram, however it's pronounced, um, and which was given to me by a client as a, something that had been in their garage for years, decades, in fact and um, decided to use it here. And it's been probably more of a learning experience for me than it has for the audience, because I'm not that confident and familiar with American clocks. So a little bit of an uphill struggle, but we are, we've turned a corner today, I think, because um, uh, I've finished off a couple of repairs that we were working on, um, re-cleaned the clock, and uh, ready to begin the process of reassembly. Now, how far we'll get tonight, I don't know, but um, let's uh, let's crack on. So when I was um, re-cleaning the clock again, I'm in the weir. Oh yeah, that's better. Uh, I was still interested in, I don't want you. Hi Ian, uh, welcome. I'm really interested in this stuff here that looks like the remnants of electroplating. So uh, my sense is that this was all electroplated to look like brass, because as you can see, and we've mentioned this before, that most of the holes in this uh, clock are in fact steel or iron arbors running in steel or iron plates. So I think that's really cool. It's had a few bushes. Um, the pivot's quite worn, but I think it's going to be okay. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. So without further ado, let's just, um, you can see by my workbench today, it has been one busy week because I'm doing um, my other YouTube channel at the same time, Read Repairs. So I've got all sorts going on. Everything is in the usual and total disarray. So uh, yeah, there's our movement frame. We can pop that to one side, just about beginning to get to know how the thing goes together, which is useful. Um, and of course, all those other things going on in the background, it's quite nice to have a little, uh, I'll just put a nut on the respite from the kind of regular work and it allows this other kind of work to catch up really. But that regular work will start in the new year again and concentrate on that. Okay, so let's just find the components of our great wheel and remind people what happened. So one of the um, 
uh, issues, uh, I guess, that I uh, saw with this clock, and it's probably the same for lots of these clocks, was that the ratchet click on both wheels was actually more than halfway off the, uh, the ratchet wheel, so potentially dangerous. So I made what, um, in retrospect, was a mistake, and um, that was to disassemble the going uh, side, as you can see here. But the problem is that it really was never intended to be disassembled, and that actually caused a bit of damage, which I wasn't very happy about. So what I ended up doing here was re-riveting this click. And actually, this one is, um, where's my key gone? Oh, this one is fine. Now it's actually very neat and up against the ratchet wheel. So that's what I would do in future. But with this one, I made a mistake and decided it would be better for me to take it apart. And in the long term, we made a new oversized uh, rivet here or uh, bearing for the click, which is great. It gives it absolutely loads of support. Um, I'm just going to turn on to... No, I'm not. Manual focus. Um, it gives it loads of support, but it was a massive faff getting the thing apart. Making the, the rivet was okay. Making the, the click thing was okay. Anyway, uh, enough of that. So um, what I've got to do now is to fit the thing back together again. So first I'll find all the parts. It's always um, useful. There's a bit. There's a new bit we made, it's a bit scruffy, but it'll do. And where is the click? It's good um, process, it's identifying um, all the parts when you're not massively familiar with them. I think that's it. So that um, goes on there. Um, yeah, it was interesting today, again, reinforcing the kind of uh, benefit, if you like, of manual cleaning that it really gets you looking at things. We've been doing other kind of cleaning as well in the, in the week, and it's an incredibly useful process. So it doesn't work yet because there isn't a pin through. And then somewhere is that thing, which goes on there and holds it all together. So that's gonna be our first um, step is to get this uh, assembly back together. Okay. So I made an oversized spacing washer thing out of 0.3 millimeter brass, I think it was, to hold the click down. Um, so the uh, pin that goes through here, I can't remember if it was brass or steel, presume it's steel, and it just is a kind of a loose fit in there. Of course, the problem is that once it's on and that is pushed on top like that, you can't get it apart without destructive techniques, as I uh, discovered. So let's just make a pin to go through there. I'm just going to start with a, a taper pin like that, like a regular sort of mild steel taper pin. I want to make it a bit less tapered. It probably, it probably would be okay. I mean, find one that actually goes in the hole would help. Right, well, that's all right. I can just file it down, which I'm gonna do anyway. So um, probably okay just tapered, but I'll make it a bit more parallel just to um, make sure it's less likely to uh, pop out. Oh, hi, Andrew. So let's just move that to one side, stop it from getting brass dust on it, brass dust. So yeah, it's that time of year, of course, where we turn our attention to what we want the year to look like. Um, which is uh, kind of quite exciting, I think, for us. I hope it is anyway. Camera's a bit hot. Just turn it down a bit. That's a bit better. Um, because there's so much um, sort of almost experimental work going on, um, you know, questions about what do we do with a Facebook group? How, how is that managed, considering it is great? I mean, we love it, but it takes up a lot of time. Um, so maybe something like if people think it's worthwhile, we'll start a Patreon page 
um, which might feed into that to actually kind of pay for a bit of the time. Um, I'll just maybe uh, make uh, take a little bit more of a sort of hands-off approach, I guess. Files to calls. I'm wearing my gloves, but anyway. And uh, we've got our YouTube video uh, video channel things, which we want to get back to to um, the kind of how to repair pendulum clocks one, and also the read repairs one, which is uh, doing really well. The video on there has just gone past seventy thousand views today, so that's um, good. And so there's always that. Uh, question with YouTube of could it ever be um, an actual sort of income um, and in fact could it be a full-time job and of course uh, the answer is yes it could be because loads of people do that but whether it's um, viable here or not I don't know okay so just setting up our pin I said I want this pin to be a reasonable fit but it can't it's captive so it doesn't really matter Squeaky, squeaky. There we go. Let's just have a look how much it needs to stick out. A little bit more. That's good. It's a little bit, um, a little sticking out to a bit too far now, but that's all right. We'll just move the old pin vice round. Try a different collet in there. Franklin survived Christmas. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> All that eating. Let's just saw this badger off. Moving that up a bit. Yeah, so this is a nice part of the project, really, as I can see, or in my mind's eye, um, it ticking away, which will be great. And uh, then at some point, we will move on to Derek's 400-day uh, clock, our anniversary clock, our torsion pendulum clock, clock with many names. Right, so we've got our pin through. Let's just have a look at the length it needs to be. Just... Mark it there with the sharpie pen. Chop off. Such a great tool, the jeweler's saw for all these little sewing jobs. I use it such a lot uh, during the day for all sorts of things, not just clockwork. I feel very uh, sorry for people who haven't discovered the jeweler's saw because, you know, if you're into craft and making, because there's that really uh, terrible thing called the junior hacksaw, which we used to be subjected to at school. And um, I've, never, I've never got on with a junior hacksaw. Uh, and you might look at a piercing saw or a jeweler saw and think, gosh, what a useless looking bit of equipment. But actually, it's uh, incredibly useful. So. As always, making a bit of a 
song and dance of what is actually a really straightforward little operation here. It's Christmas after all. You can't labour a point at Christmas, when can you? So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting, uh, as always, to know what your plans are, the horological plans for the new year. What kinds of things do you want to develop? Uh, what kinds of projects do you want on the bench? Do you, have you got your eye on new um, tools or machinery or workshop developments? On the Facebook group, again, we're always sort of confronted by, um, you know, it's primarily beginners. So it's what machinery do I need? What tools do I need? Um, which is fascinating, of course, and unanswerable. Nearly there. It just needs to fit into that little slot. So it's just a bit big. Just a bit fat on the fat. And that's all. So it is actually kind of a loose fit in that um, loose fit in there when it's okay. Oh, that's nice, Andrew. That's very kind. Oh, gosh, Jeremy, you worked in a bike shop. Yeah, really jealous. That's kind of my, when I'm really um, sick of clocks, <laughs> which is often, um, I have this fantasy, of course, of starting a bike shop because I'm always complaining there's never a decent bike shop and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but of course, they sort of out with the frying pan into the fire. But it's very much the same thing. Um, is that what is that? Did you start that conversation off, Rachel? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Right, 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 right. Got it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some um, clocks. You can probably see there. Little carriage clock. Uh, we um, saw a carriage clock, uh, some 19th century thing with a horizontal escapement. And uh, didn't get it. It was an auction, and we uh, didn't didn't get it. And um, and then the next day, I was looking out of the window and went across to the charity shop, which is just literally across the road, and um, saw this clock in the window, and and it has um, a little sticker on it. I'll show you it. So it looks like um, like a regular sort of quartz modern carriage clock, but as you can see. It's actually got mechanical movement. And, um, and I thought, ah, eight, it must be one of those squeezer eight day alarm clocks, which are really nice quality. And in fact, it might be the same movement, but um, I looked at the back and not only was it four pounds, so it was within budget just, but it also has got my name written on it. So I thought absolutely perfect. And um, open it. So it's one of those little, uh, Where's it thing's gone? Thing gone. Um, Swiss, uh, nice quality, jeweled lever movements. And somebody started to take it apart, but the uh, the winding ratchet is broken. There's no click. So whether they've taken parts out of it, I don't know, but we'll find out. So that's going to be one of my re repairs things. But uh, anyway, I've got this clock to finish and many other things and a bike to finish. But the bike was good fun or is, is actually good fun. Again, um, you know, you go to the, uh, if you go to the, uh, in, in the UK, we call it the skip, sort of household recycling center. And you see lots and lots and lots of basically steel, all steel bikes in the skip, which probably get recycled for metal. But um, I always think it's a shame that they're, um, it's a bit of a shame because they're actually good bikes. And uh, yeah, they're not carbon fiber and they weigh four times as much as a carbon fiber bike, but TBH, um, when you get to my age, a bit, <laughs> there's um, carrying more around my waist than the difference with a carbon fiber bike. So that'll make a heck of a lot of difference. And um, 
And those of us uh, like Ian, who was a cyclist, will know that steel in a bike frame is king, he says. So um, anyway, long story. So in... Ian says he's still riding his father's 1964 Rally Royal. Well, there you go. It says it all, doesn't it? I mean, those, um, the, the uh, amazing thing about this bike is that it's the late 70s, maybe 79, something like that. And I'm not sentimental about it. It's just a thing. Um, but uh, there's very little sort of plastic on it, which, again, is not a big deal either way. Ah, there we go. So there's our um, pin, which fits in there. So that's just going to secure the click. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm not sentimental about it, but uh, it, we bought the bike from a charity shop, about 80 pounds. And it's a good bike. It's absolutely incredibly well preserved. Needs new tires on it and stuff, but you could ride around the world on it really. Um, no problem. So okay, let's just dry run this so that goes in there yeah I saw, I saw some comments about patrons that's really something we need to look into because um it's uh the how the whole how to repair pendulum box thing is great but it's um it's basically a full-time job now and um other than our little book which um hasn't actually made any money yet yay it's gonna work there we go cool so all i want to do now is put some oil on it and um rivet it together now this thing get that out um this little pushed on bit of brass, because I don't think that was intended to be um, uh, to um, be taken off ever. I'm going to put some stud lock on there. There was a lot of them. Um, we had uh, two days on the Facebook group where we're basically 24 hours of um, discussion about whether uh, stud lock is um, acceptable or not, which I um, firmly believe that it is. It's absolutely fine, as is soft soldering and you name it. Um, it all depends on the context and so on. So I'm just gonna clean off the arbor with a bit of isopropyl just to get the um, stuff off, whatever they call it, um, paraffin. Let's find some oil. Usual thing here, oil in this. Um, I've kind of figured out, I think in my own mind at least, the hierarchy for oiling is some oil is better than no oil. That's the number one important thing. A bit like in your car uh, crankcase, you try running it with no oil. Um, then oil in the right place is the second kind of uh, hierarchy. Um, so not on the wheels and the pinion leaves. And then the third thing is the so-called right kind of oil, which of course is um unanswerable sort of uh, thing to ask for. So I think people get very excited about the kind of oil, but I would actually argue that some oil is the most important thing. And as I said, um, oil in the right place is the second most important thing. God really knows. Right, so we've got some oil, bit of D5, Mobius D5. We've got an oiler. Favorite oiler. And let's just get a wee bit of oil on there. Comments about what people are working on, Dalsky working on his new to him lathe. Right. Oh, yeah, the one that he repainted. Controversially. And Ian's been trying to get back to his skeleton clock. His skeleton clock back to life. Right, okay. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? You um with I mean you can understand the lathe being a bit of a project, taking that apart and so on. But the skeleton clock, you kind of look at those. I had a single train fusey clock uh in uh, belonging to a client a couple of weeks ago, 
And it's always easy to underestimate how much work there is in those things. You think it's going to be a day's work, and then, of course, it turns out being a month's work because every little thing needs attention. There we are. So just dialed the, uh, where the click spring touches the click and uh, where the rivet touches the click as well. It's quite gloopy oil. Maybe I should have used thinner oil. Anyway, plenty of it on there. Then that chap on, then that thing on, and this thing on. And then we just want to sneak in there with a little bit of stud lock. Um, we'll just find it. No, same thing. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Lock tight's just the. Um, they used to call it, well, they probably still do call it a uh, thread locking compound. I, I presume the word stud lock comes from studs in things like car cylinder heads. But as you can see here, Loctite is a trade name of Henkel, um, registered trademark. Um, but they're all kinds of brands and they do all different things. I mean, some are for incredibly specific. Um, specific purposes. I'm going to use 2701 here, which is my kind of favorite one. So what I do find is that grease and oil do um, destroy these. Some of them are oil uh, friendly ish, but I found on other work with clocks because obviously everything gets oily. Um, I'll use a different applicator, not the one I'm oiling the clock with. That um, it gets destroyed. There we are, just a little bit on there just to help you sleep at night in case uh, you're worried about that thing exploding when somebody's winding it up. Okay, back to the vice. Once it comes to then you said that's blue. No, it's not as far as I'm concerned. Um, oh, I know what it was. Well, the, this actual case that got people, um, what, what the what does um, Harriet call it? Triggered. That's it. The thing that got somebody triggered was um, just pop that brass. By the way, if you haven't got one already and you're watching this on the recording or something, brass split stick. Incredibly useful. You can either make one or you can buy them from the Internet. They're really quite inexpensive and incredibly useful because you can hack it up and modify it really useful for little riveting jobs like this. So I'll pop that on there. Then I've got my somewhere, I've just done it. Um, drumstick here. Drumstick handles, I've said this before, really good because they're nice hardwood, they're hickory or something like that. So, oops, full of sawdust still, how oh well. Um, Don't want to knock this one too far. <laughs> Should have cleaned it out first before I started. Wobbly. Too tight. And uh, it was somebody who had a pendulum from um, kind of fits a pendulum from a mantel clock. And there was uh, a, a, like a stud, a metal stud or something. And then there was a hole and they, somebody tried to soft solder it at some point and made a bit of a mess of it, pig's ear of it. And um, it hadn't really worked. So uh, I said, you know, some people said, why don't you tap it, you know, thread it and tap it. Um, but the problem is that this person is a beginner, and I remember, right, so that's got that. It's got it nice and firm, but the uh, winding ratchet can work okay. So good, happy with that. And the point is that I remember when I started, sounded like an old person now, which of course I am. Um, I didn't know what um, a tap and dice set was, never mind 
which one to get or how you would use it. And I didn't have a drill and blah, 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 blah. blah. So I thought as um, a bit of super glue on there, a bit of Loctite is a perfectly reasonable solution, but um, caused quite a lot of controversy on the basis that some people think there is a right and wrong way to fix a clock. Uh, anyway, that was all good fun. Kept me awake, kept me awake for two days. Non-stop typing. But uh, I mean, in this case, I really like that because it, it it would have probably been okay as it was, but it just gives me that little bit of sort of, um, as I said, peace of mind. And um, that it isn't, that washer isn't, a uh, collar isn't going to work its way off. And then when somebody's winding it, you're going to end up with uh, somebody suing you because they've got broken fingers or something. So, um, and a bit of heat will uh, break the bond of that. So you can just a little bit of gas on it and it'll undo okay oil back in there yep. our first thing putting together nice and happy with that that's all good let's just a little bit more oil in here because um maybe a long time until this clock is overhauled again and as, uh, with those three layers of material, the good thing about that is the oil will get sucked in there by capillary action and it isn't really going to go anywhere. You know, it's not going to drip out. So we're done. Uh, let's put that there, that there. And then somewhere I've got the spring, death trap spring. So this, this clock, it winds to the center. So, um, which train this is let's just have a look at this movement so that goes that way around so this is the going train yeah i've put the right label on the right thing so let's just figure this out winding counterclockwise winding counterclockwise like that middle of the spring might want um closing up a bit just so it hooks on i don't want to get the clock together and then it not hook on mm, yeah i might just do that now before i forget maybe it'll be okay but... yeah the whole um without wanting to um reawaken the hornet's nest the whole idea that there is a right or wrong way to do anything is is really uh cemented in people's minds and i, I do get it you know they've built their practice on what they believe is the right thing to do but um you know the problem with it is in, and from my perspective is that that's a kind of closing attitude because um if you have one way obviously ultimately we want to consider other ways. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Right, okay, that's um, just closed up the end of the spring a bit, so it's gonna save me the embarrassment of um, taking the thing apart again. Good, phew. So uh, relieved to get that done because it was um, been apart a long time. And of course, anywhere where there are multiple components like this, and like in this workshop, as there are, I'm sure in all your workshops, um, you run the risk of losing parts if things are in bits a long time. Right, okay. Uh, those of you who watched the ICON lecture a couple of weeks ago, it'll be online. Uh, and heard Tabby Aruda's story from the clock museum in Vienna, where I think she said they've got like 7,000 clocks or something and everything in bits in store. You know, the whole problem with that is absolutely massive. Okay, so let's find the bits for our center wheel assembly. That's definitely one of them. Uh, so we've got two springs here, one of which is uh, the friction spring. 
And then that one is the um, lifting piece for the striking work. Oh, there's the friction spring. Now, there's something I didn't note about this when I took it apart, and I should have done. Um, I think that's it. So we've got a wheel and a spacing piece. So what we've got here, we've got um, a center arbor. So this has got the minute hand on it here. In fact, if we can find our hand, there it is, look, goes on that sort of a rectangle. So we've got our minute hand on center arbor, goes down once an hour. And then we've got our cannon pipe, which goes on there. And there is uh, the hour hand goes on there. There's a 12 to one reduction ratio between the two. Cool. But on the back end of it, we've got our clutch. And in horology, uh, there's not always, but typically a clutch between the hands and the, um, the mechanism. So uh, the hands and the mechanism, uh, let's see. Oops. But I'll stripe you now. Okay. Which allows you to turn the hands independent of turning the train wheels, which makes a lot of sense. So this is that clutch. Now let's just check which way around this wheel goes. There we are. Okay, so we've got um, center pinion and then we've got our uh, wheel, center wheel type thing on there. Let's just heat this up a bit. Yeah. And we've got again a um, little spacing piece and then a spring, which I just had a look at before we went on air. That can go either way around. And that spring is compressed and it touches against a pin, which gets pushed through there. Now, what I didn't understand was why does this arbor have, well, it's interesting that one hole for one pin is a blind hole, so the pin just sticks out of one side, which I kind of get. But this hole, which as you can see, goes the whole way through, and there's the pin that came out of the hole, um, is heavily chamfered or countersunk on one side, I wonder whether that's just to aid with manufacture because you've got to squidge the spring down and then get the pin in the hole uh, or whether there's some other function which I am unaware of. Uh, I don't know. So let's just have a little bit of oil on here as well. So just on the face of that, can you use that in focus? Come on, camera, please. Oh. Manual focus, okay. So let's have a bit of oil on the face of here, a couple of drops, pop that there. So that's where the, um, the friction takes place. Then we've got our spacing piece on, and we've got our spring on here, pop that on there. And then I need to compress that. So I might actually hold it in the vise, otherwise it's gonna fly off and disappear under the floorboards. Back to our incredibly useful split stick, but this time, let's just focus. Uh, this time um, I'm gonna use it with one of the, the holes that's actually gonna hold the arbor rather than a loose fit. Check it's not touching on the base on the inside. So, I don't know what you think to the kind of bird's eye view. Normally I have the camera on one side, but for reasons that I've totally forgotten, um, I've now got it at the side for a change is as good as the rest, I suppose. So I'm going to compress this spring. If I let go, it's going to hit the camera. Yeah. Just hold that pin through. Yeah, I presume that um, I presume that chamfer is just for this operation. That when you're assembling the thing, it's a damn sight easier when there's a chamfer there. Now, interestingly, that spring is um 
just held by Freddie Friction. So again, uh, would you put um, a bit of uh, stud lock on there or something? It wasn't before. And as you can see, it doesn't actually move in relation to the spring. So I'm pretty happy to uh, to leave it. Although, of course, um, if Ian's uh, still there, um, he had this kind of worry, uh, totally understandable worry about his um, <coughs> setup on his skeleton clock, about whether there should or shouldn't be a pin there to hold the click in place. So um, I would you know, always maintain that the most important part of that process is the thinking and the consideration of um, what the options are. There we go. So there's our clutch um, assembled. Spring, nice bit of friction there. Oil on both sides where, where the friction occurs. And so we're on to the next bit now, which of course I should have um, I should have made that pin before I started. And oh. thinking ahead, it's never been one of my strong points. So what we want here is a pin in this blind hole. So I'll just keep cutting this down basically with some cutters until it gets to be in the ballpark. And then I'll tidy up the end. Bad practice to let those bits of metal go flying around. Just in case anybody's building a computer in the corner of the room and it lands on the circuit board. Right, perfect. So it just doesn't fit in the hole now. It's uh, not quite fit in there. So if I can seek out our pin vice again. Now I'm going to do my favorite thing with these pins and that's to the draw file it. Um, back to our piece of wood. And just uh, and flat. We know it doesn't fit in the hole, so it's going to be a bit smaller. So just put on a very blunt sort of lead in there. And let's just use the edge of the file, draw file it. So it actually sticks in the hole. And ever so fractionally too small now. So just keep shortening it basically until it's a good fit. A bit more. <laughs> really <laughs> good fit now. Happy with that. So again, this uh, pin is held in with uh, friction. The spring is pushing in this direction. So, um, excuse me. So it isn't going to drop out, I don't think. Now, I'm not going to put that stud lock on because I don't think you'd ever get it out, although the whole thing is quite oily with the, um, with the kerosene stuff that I used to clean it with. So maybe it wouldn't be able to get too much of a grip. Maybe I'm filing the pin down, the hole's getting bigger every time I try it.
Yeah, it's weird um, that it's a blind hole. Don't know why they've done that. I suppose the trouble with drilling holes in uh, industry is that it's kind of quite easy to, you know, in the in the good old days, quite easy to begin a hole. But actually, um, the drill tends to break when it bre uh, breaks through the other side. I saw this on that from until clock I once worked on that um, it. Uh, yeah, there we are. That stud lock is there just asking to be used. So I'm going to use it. Um, that they drilled lots of blind holes, you know, not drilled lots of blind holes, but where they could, they used blind holes. Um, obviously, it's a much easier thing nowadays to um, use with modern drills and so on. I don't know how much this has got to stick up. So I think that goes on like that. And then what this little mechanism do is it provides a safety. So the clock is normally driving in that direction. So this bit here, from what I remember, lifts the striking. So this lifts the uh, bell striking, I think. Um, and um, when you set the hands, if you set the hands backwards, then the spring acts as a safety piece like that. So all that spring has to be, all that pin has to be, sorry, is uh, long enough. So again, I'll just use my piercing saw to cut it off. Good. There we go. So there's our little pin in the arbor once the camera decides to focus. Thank you. And you can see there the safety action working. So the springs in compression goes over the end there, locks in place. But when it's moving in the other direction, you say, for instance, you set the hands backwards, it'll just ride over the top like that. So clever, very clever little system. Right. I haven't lost it. There is um, another spring there. And what this spring does is to keep that one pressing against the pin. Just have a look at this with my eyeglass and check it's not ended. No, it's not. It's just an old spring, a bit of brass spring. And then there's a little wire circlip, or at least there was. Get it out to hold the whole thing together many moons ago there it is so we've got a little circlip here all that does is the arbor is very very slightly um tapered so if we just push that on like not the right tool for the job like that probably squidged it up too much And it works. Yeah, that's okay. It can just brighten up playing there. It's a bit of a crazy angle, so just try straighten it up a little bit. Doesn't seem particularly tight, the uh, the circlip, but I suppose that's all it has to do. That little bit of uh, safety action. It's nice and positive. Don't think it needs any oil on it. So the worst thing that's going to happen there if that clip comes undone, which is really tight, actually, surprisingly tight, um, is uh, there'll be no striking on the bell, uh, which won't be the end of the world. So good. Right. Mm. Right, that's uh, the next bit done. So now the real fun begins. Get the oil out of the way. Um, it's our movement frame. 
So this is really something that I should have done about 10 times before I uh... Yeah, thank you, Andrew. I saw that um, tip jar thing. I saw, uh, I occasionally follow a, a channel called Five Watt World, which is about guitar history. And uh, so he said, put something in the tip jar, which is just like, stick a dollar in there or something, which, uh, which is great. I don't quite know how you manage all that stuff from um, there's obviously tax implications and all that stuff, which we'd need to look into. But uh, yeah, definitely that is absolutely on the horizon. So uh, this chap can go on our camp wheel. And of course, the key here is to have it going the correct way around. And we can tell which way around it goes because you can see there's a witness mark on here. One of the great, he says, climbing back onto his um Yeah, the torsion <laughs> clock, considering if you think that doing the American clock is out of my comfort zone, doing the torsion clock is going to be as well. But anyway, at least we've got uh, Derek there to keep us on the straight and narrow. Um, anyway, what's the same? Yeah, so that bears on there. The beauty of not refinishing things in cleaning is that you've got these witness marks so you can actually see where things have been. So a little bit of oil on there. Let's just put a bit of D3 on there. Not the one that's had the stud lock on it. Again, a couple of little drips. Don't need masses. Pop that on there. Pop on our clip that holds it on. Again, this is such a clever uh, system. Now I see it's got B on there. Presumably that means back. But again, you don't need to scratch it um, because it's obvious which way around it goes. He says, Probably getting it the wrong way around, but I think that's right. So that the tail of that little um, sprung clip just goes in that hole like that. Check it's not going to drop off. Good. And there we go. So this clip doesn't need to be super tight. It, enough is enough. All it does is it prevents the, because this type of count wheel isn't continually um, engaged with uh, the gear train, it's, it's fed or driven by a two pin pinion. So it's indexed basically. So it moves in, in discrete steps. So what you've got to check between those steps is that when the clock's striking or whatever, it doesn't vibrate out of position because that would cause it to jam. And that's what that spring does. So enough is enough there. Let's just pop a tiny bit of oil on there where it joins on. Concern. Oh, good. Right. It's, it's probably no, I'm putting off the actual process of actually putting the thing back together. Um, in particular, these springs, which drive me bonkers. the key and again i may well make a mistake here so this is going um this is the front yeah okay so that goes in that direction and they wind to this is one of those cases where i've just got to think once and yeah okay so that's striking which goes on that side that way around this is going which goes that way around like that cool i will eventually commit to actually putting it together so here's our center arbor we need our cannon wheel interesting point here where you've got this very long bearing like you often have with um uh any sort of clock really with concentric tubes. Um, do you actually want to put oil in there? Well, you might do, um, but of course you've got all that uh, area. So you definitely don't want to put any thick oil in there. So what I would do is either just use a, a pencil, a really soft um, pencil or um, graphite pencil if you have, know any artists. Just go like that. That would probably be enough for me. 
this thing, remember, has only got the hour hand on it. Um, so I might just leave it like that. The other thing you can do is get a bit of uh, uh, pith wood here. You know, the old elder pith. Pop a little bit of oil on it and just smear that on the arbor just to make it slightly oily. You don't actually want liquid oil in there because it'll just go thick and gloopy and stop the thing. Okay, well, now we can oil this bearing from the outside when it's assembled so we can pop that in there. And this is where some people like to use one of those movement stand holder things. I am not a massive fan of those, so I'm gonna struggle. I like, um, as you probably gathered now, I like the struggle of the pain of the whole thing. So why would you want to use, uh, make your life easy? So let's just think about this train now. This is gonna take me a while to figure it out. So somewhere we've got our lovely multifunction uh, wheel here, which is doing the lifting for the striking. And it's got those two pins on it, look, that we talked about a minute ago for uh, indexing the wheel. And that goes in that hole there. Because I haven't done any um, bushing and stuff, uh, all the pivots wobble about, but that's okay. We can live with that. I think I can sneak the fly in after. So not too fussed about that either. Uh, what else have we got? So we've got wheel there probably. Or maybe not. Um, let's have a look. Pinion. So one, all right, okay, we've got two wheels. Look very similar, I remember this now. Um, but in fact, they're at different heights. So which is which is the answer question. One of them goes in there, I think, and drives that pinion, which looks to be the one. And the other one. I think one of them scratched, isn't it, as well? Yeah, so that one that I thought on that side is somebody scratched it with an S, which is moderately useful in this case, just to double, triple check. That goes in there, that goes in there. What else have we got? There's our fly, which we don't need yet, but might as well just assemble it. Uh, I think it goes that way around, but we can soon flip it over if that's, oops, not right. A lot of friction on there actually it doesn't need to be that much. It does need to move. Um, what else have we got here? Escape wheel. Sorry, trying to forget about the camera. Just that out the way. Yeah, and this is <laughs> where like an, a long case clock is, you know, like a European long case clock is so easy when you're used to them anyway, because everything's sort of so solid and nothing's moving about in this kind of slightly crazy way, or at least it seems. All right, so here we are again, like two wheels that look the same, but in fact, the Arbors, uh, in fact, they are, I think they are the same wheel out that we discussed this before, but the, um, the whole thing is shunted along in a different place so we can't get those mixed up. We've got three bits of striking work. Again, I'm, you probably can tell I'm stalling for, um, for time here. There's our motion work wheel, which just sneaks in there. Now it goes underneath, wrong side, goes in there like that. Uh, what else? Then we've got our hammer, which I think I can sneak in after. And that's con, not concentric, coaxial with this thing that um, strikes the bell on the passing striking. So got all my springs in place. I think 
if I'm rightly, I can get that in once the plates are actually put together. So no panic there. Got that in there. So which one of these goes here? No, not that one, that one. And that one goes there. And that one feeds our escape wheel pinion there. So there's our two trains in, all wibbly wobbly. As I say, I think I can get the fly in once the whole thing's together. And all we need now are our lifting uh, pieces, striking work. So here's our uh, count wheel dent one. So that goes in that hole there. That goes in that hole there, like that. Then we've got this on there. Hmm. I'll show you once you've done 10 of these, you can just knock them together in three minutes, but I haven't done 10 of them. And then we've also got uh, this lifting piece here, which is in that arbor, that hole, sorry, there, like that. Spot the deliberate mistake. where I'm thinking I should have practiced it. Okay, so that looks about right to me. The, uh, this piece uh, lifts the um, count wheel dent. This piece here is lifted by this chap, I think, like that, yep. Um, and this is our warning piece. So now if I, um, that's warning, that must go on that side of that. It says with absolutely no conviction whatsoever. Um. Mm, interesting. That's not right, is it? Somebody's shouting at the camera going, yeah, it's going the wrong way around, Matthew. What are you doing? So that has to bear on there because that's the warning piece. Sounds like you should have taken the glass before. <laughs> Well, they're there on my computer somewhere, but um, okay, yeah, absolutely. A billion notes and com and uh, pictures, always, always, always. Right, so. Well, this will, um, as always, this will stand as a good kind of like how not to do it sort of uh, pr process one to for somebody. So I can't will detent is in the correct place. Yes, that's now in the correct place. And maybe this will just slot in on top, although that arm there will have to sneak underneath like that. Ta-da. Needs to be at that side of that lever. Right. Cool. I think we're there. It says zero confidence. Might leave the escape wheel just dangling on there for the time being. Now, with all this faff, I've now got to 
get those labels off, which I should have done earlier. And maybe get them out. Yeah, I'll come out when the spring gets wound up. Right, so that goes in there, goes through that pillar. If you were gluing these all in place, maybe that's the answer. Just put some super glue on every pivot until the whole thing is uh, assembled. This is our striking um, mainspring in place. Let's just pop the going one on. Um, right, okay. I put the clip on the wrong side when I was winding the springs. That uh, long piece should have been on the, um, on the outside. Now, is that gonna cause me a problem? Yeah, the spring is on the correct way around. I wonder whether that's going to prevent us from actually getting that thing together. Let's turn a bit of string off. Sneak that down. There we go. So I don't think that's going to cause a problem because I haven't put the striking or the, uh, the hammer in yet. Let's just zoom out a little bit so I don't keep losing my place. Um, yeah, that label's annoying. But, um, it's better to have the label on than it was for me to get them mixed up live on a... Let's see, I've lost them. One second. So yeah, I'm sure people who, um, let's just get that out of the way and then we'll get the rest of it out when we wind it up. Um, people do this the whole time. It takes four minutes, but uh, there you go. So let's just pop the plate on. Um, Jeremy says he's looking forward to the springs. I don't know if he means on this clock or the season of spring. <laughs> he's probably looking forward to me getting these clips off. Uh, Ian says spring clips all the time for rejoicing. I, I definitely, the minute that those clips are off and the thing actually winds up without taking my head off, will be, um, yeah, absolutely. It hasn't gone that far down onto the pillar but I don't want to push it because um I'd rather it didn't sort of explode. I think it's just pulling it across to one side. Yeah it is yeah right that little motion work wheel um can stay in place please good 
and as I say, just a fly to sneak in there. Might have been able to actually sneak that warning wheel in as well by springing the frame, but any other things? This is where if you're working on a regulator, you always leave out the um, Harrison's maintaining power, ratchet until you've got the whole clock together, then you think, right, got to take it all apart again. So brass tweezers, and let's just start to gently encourage these um, arbors into place. Oh, well, there you go, the warning wheels leapt out anyway, so. You're not helping. Maybe I need to sit down for this. Oh gosh. So the question now is, am I going to get the play on by half past? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, maybe the spring will just fly out and that'll be the end of it. Yeah, the plate on, yeah. As in the thing together, or at least this part of it, any, anyway. Or yeah, so it, put the fusee spring back this week. I said to Philippe follow. Who did? Ian did. Oh, in the skeleton clock. Yes. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's always um, nerve wracking, isn't it, when you've got all that? Anything that's in bits is a problem. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I'm you know, the not the person to lead by example, but don't have clocks in bits. Speaks the person that's got 300 <laughs> clocks in bits. Thanks for putting them back together. And who says the spring clips are an interesting shape? Yeah, I nicked these from John along with the vice. You do? Yeah. Are they specifically for loop and springs? Yeah, I think so. I um, decided that I should. Um, not pursue my plywood ones, oh, yeah. considering they nearly took my face off once. Yeah, I decided that was probably uh, one experiment too far. Let's just pop a nut on there. Yeah, I nicked him from John. Um, he, uh, it's a long story, but back in years ago, he brought a clock round. Oh, it's a long story. Really nice American Ansonia clock in a marble onyx case, sorry. And I've still got the clock. And I, we were working on something for our book about mainsprings. And at that point, we thought, at least, that we would um, deal with uh, loop-end mainsprings at the same time. So I did some photographs and so on. But then we got distracted with the, the whole Enfield thing. And... Uh, I never give them the spring things back. So never lend tools to Matthew Reed or anything, in fact. That's for sure. Right, so why is that jammed? Probably because it's on the side, that wheel. I think the only way I can go about this, having next to zero experience of doing these, is just to go around and get one um, arbor in at a time. Got a nut on, oh sorry, I've got a nut on here to try and keep the whole thing together. There we go. That's in. So what's next on this side? That's that. Encourage that center arbor in. There we go. And there's our little motion work arbor. That's in. Up on this side, I'm sorry, up on this side on the so called go train. 
just pop that chap in there. Good. Um, this, of course, is only the first time I've tried to put it together. So there'll be at least another eight attempts when I've remembered different parts that must go in. So I've got a couple of nuts on. Uh, a couple of nuts on now. Don't let go of it. Striking labors of them. Um, presumably in the factory, they had jigs for all this stuff. Let's just go back up here. That one's popped out now. Motion work wheel. There we are. I suppose the uh, sensible, so called sensible thing to do is just to get one of these movements and just practice when you've got a half an hour ticket apart. Right. I'm going to put a note on there as well, at least to stop that from leaping out again. There we go. So we've now got uh, our multifunction striking wheel, striking arbors. Let's just move around this side. Oh, I see. Shoot problem. That's in now. Okay. You should think that's how long this is going to take a number of weeks. Our escape wheels are not in, but I don't think that's a problem. Let's just deal with that now, just in case it turns out to be a problem. Well, of course, it was um, it was easy when we were just dealing with the escapement only. Now there's another wheel in the place not so easy to move all right well no 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 to self for next time um there should have been and we'll put a nut on there as well can always take them off again sorry keep moving out the frame of the camera this is one of the rare times in my life where i actually have to concentrate on something it's um it's not something that's very rare that often seen Derek says, is there supposed to be a wheel left on the bench? Yeah, no. Good point. <laughs> now, I've got it together, but there's two, two wheels. Not only is a wheel on the bench, but there's also this floppy thing here, which nobody knows what it does. So, um, so my challenge now is my escape wheel, which I think I'll have to take that wheel out of engagement which will probably mean every single thing is going to drop out to get the escape wheel in. It's a good point, Derek. There are meant to be zero parts left over. And also zero bent pivots as well. I can see why people bend pivots at this stage and then end up snapping them off. Right, escape wheels in. Let's move that back, move that back, move that back, move that in. Click, nice, that and that. Great. Okay, there's a bit of floppy action at the side. Magic. So we shot the fact we haven't got two wheels in the thing. We're laughing, I think. 
everything else there. Yay! Actually works. So there's something amiss there. No, that's loose. That's loose. I just got 10 minutes yet to take it all apart again in case there's something I forgot. Put that, put that on there. Never work with children, pets, or live streaming, putting together clocks so you don't really know how they work. So the only thing I'm slightly concerned about now is this. Uh, let me just put the minute hand on because I'm not convinced I've got this lifting piece in the right place. Oh, I was going to get around to de-rusting the hands this week as well. We'll do that next week. Yep, that's good. That works. Right. Uh, just take a breath. And um, now I've got to get that uh, striking work in, haven't I? This chuck here. So I think how this works is... Oh, I did that on uh, Facebook today. I put a new bit of leather in there. I thought it was quite a nice little job. So that hangs down. That goes up there. That um whatever they call it stop there goes in that notch in the frame so i know that that has to go up the inside of there that goes in there and eventually that'll go up in that hole but so is that on the correct side yes it is but there's this thing to go on as well, which is the passing striking. So they're coaxial. So let's just pop them together. That goes in there. Is that right? He says, uh, no, that way around, even. Okay. So this is whoever designed this thing, total genius. So this is our, our striking. And uh, this is our half hour striking. Uh, this thing is on the outside of the plate. The hammer's on the outside of the plate. And it's that way around. I wonder if it's easier to do it this way. Maybe easy is not quite the right expression. If I can get the front pivot in which is there, that's it. Other than the fact the pivot's not in the hole yet. Yeah, looks like it's okay there, although it's the lifting piece is through the crossing of the wheel. So I've just got to make sure that as it moves into position, it doesn't get stuck on the wrong side of it. So let's just get that nut off. Let's see, I'll have to get that nut as well, I think. This is where we could be totally back to square one. And somebody's saying, yeah, you can't put that in at the end, Matthew. You've got to put it in first, which wouldn't surprise me. So let's just have a look. Should be film made of this. Will it want it? Will it tick? I think those nuts are inside out, but I'm not bothered yet. I guess they go scratchy side down. 
Hold on, maybe not. Hello to our pliers. I do have the little um, Enfield spanner, but let's just squeeze it with us for the time being. And sanity check the whole thing, because obviously before we take the clips off the springs, we want to make sure that it isn't going to explode. But I think if all our trains are in place and everything's straight, well, as straight as these clocks ever are when they're like this and not under tension, I think we're okay. Now, of course, when we take the spring off here, there's going to be a bit of escape wheel action. So I'm just going to tie up the escape wheel with a bit of um, wire or something. Crazy thick wire, but it'll do. Overkill. There the least. Tiny thin bit of thin wire would have done. I ain't going nowhere. Good. Um, do somewhere have the actual key that I bought? I'll see if I can find it. All the way from America. So let's just do this very tentatively. Um, I would put on my actual gloves, you know, like safety gloves. So if you're doing this at home, put on your safety gloves and your safety glasses. But I'm going to get my safety glasses because my I'm going to well, have because <laughs> my fingers will grow back, which would was not useful, but my eyes probably won't that rapidly anyway, not on my age. So again, uh, we haven't tightened the nuts yet, but they're tightened down. I'll just check, check, check. I won't tighten them tight because uh, I'll do that with the proper little brass spanner that I made. Oh, oh there we go. It's a spring jumping off the end of the thing. Let me jump. And on this side, Same thing. So the moral of the story is uh, make sure that the spring is actually hooked on before you put the thing together. I slightly over uh, enthusiastically thought that it would join on. All right. Okay. I thought it would hook on, which of course probably never going to do. Let me see in and see the hooking. I'll be able to get it to, uh, to do it. Once it's on and it starts to wind, it'll be fine. So yeah, I'm learning. We're all learning. The answer is I've only got really skanky gloves at the moment, unfortunately, because they've been used for other operations. How a nice clean movement with a bit of tissue. So again, a bit of a wind, a bit of a check. Looks okay. I'm being, for me, hyper cautious here because obviously 
There were no accidents. Just check all these wheels have got a bit of end shake, which don't look fine. And same on the striking side, which is, as you can see, happily striking away. We did go with the shop, um, team up and club club to try and buy some new gloves today, but they'd closed early with it being New Year and stuff. Right. Okay, I think we're assorted, as they say, young people. Let's just um, put those wires in place now because I don't want to get it any further wound and then realize that the uh, striking wires are in the wrong place. So I need a tweezers. Um, let's start down here. So this uh, hammer is obviously uh, meant to be sprung against that stop like that. So in here, there's a little brass spring somewhere. Yeah, it is totally around the wrong side of the arbor. Like that. Now I don't know how um, elegant these things are meant to be, but uh, there you go. I can tidy that up a bit. But you can see now it's working. So let's look at the uh, cathedral gong one here, which is uh, meant to be sprung the other way. So it's sprung actually the wrong way at the moment. It's meant to be sprung back that way. So for it to be sprung back that way, the spring has to come around here in this direction. So let's just have another look at what's going on. Again, it's gotten around the wrong side of the arbor. There we go. So let's pop it around there. And Again, hook it onto the plate. Presumably, when you get uh, more experienced and competent at these clocks, you can. There are little uh, tricks and fixes for uh, doing this without having to kind of brutalize these springs. Sort of putting them in place at the beginning rather than as I'm doing it now. You could put it around the stop for the mainspring, but I don't think that's the purpose of this. Well, that's not definitely the purpose of the stop, but I don't think that's going to help. Maybe it should be somewhere inside the plate. Yeah, let's just pop it up there and round that pillar instead. It'll be neater. Again, as you said, Derek, maybe if I look at the actual photographs that when I took it apart, it would help enormously. Not enough there. So oh, let's just get it. Sorry, you can't see a thing here. But, uh, there you go. Pop it around there. And then let's get that actually around the pillar inside. Derek's got his swatter brief put together now. Yeah, he was waiting until he watched you doing it, but he's not looking forward to it. He's got it to put together. Yes. Well, hopefully he's learnt by my mistakes. Um, I, I mean... Can you lean back a bit, Matthew? Because maybe your hair is in the shot. Yeah, I know. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I can lean back, but I can't see. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I presume there's an elegant way of doing this. I haven't seen one, but there again, I'm sure if I looked on uh, YouTube and so on, you would find a much more elegant way of doing it. So that still needs feeding up between those pillars. I 
Oh, there we are. That's better. Wiggle that along a bit. Yeah, must be a neater way of doing it. Couldn't be any less elegant if I tried. We're getting there though. So now that needs to be round. Frankie also said you should have made, taken some pictures. Yeah, I should. I have. I did. I took hundreds, but I um, <laughs> can't be bothered to look at them. It's very bad practice. Bad clockmaker. I'll be struck off again for the multiple time. Cast out. Oh well. That was the best of us. There we go. So let's have a look at this now. Hmm. Needs to be a bit, it's working, but it's not um, lively enough still. So it needs a bit more tension. We're probably out of time for this week. But uh, anyway, the principles there. And uh, so yeah, we've got this one working now and this one working, this is a bit lame. Needs more tension on there. And then what we've got up here are our um, count wheel detent here, which to be honest, I don't know why they don't just let gravity do it because gravity seems absolutely fine there, but um, there is a little spring. So that one's hooking, I guess, around that pillar, which is, I suppose that's the acid test, isn't it? Does it work? Um, does it work in space? Yes, it does. Just in case. You never know, do you? And then this other one, this lifting lever, same thing. That can just go on like that. I can tidy those up, but I think that's done. Yeah, they they'll both work in space now, so. Pretty happy about that. Don't really know why they need those springs in them, but there you go. Uh, so what we're we doing with time? Oh, we're over time. Okay, so it's time to call it here. But I think I can reasonably say, I'll just wind the springs a bit more. Famous last words. That that clock movement is now assembled. We've got the pallets to put on, but they need hardening yet. But that's a short job. And then the regulator to go on, one screw. Is where the end comes off the spring and if you're a beginner watching this by the way if you're going to start repairing clocks my strongest advice don't start on a clock with open springs not that i'm the most experienced practical clock maker but um uh, with a clock with uh, enclosed barrels, I would say, because um, again, highly controversially, as a beginner, as a reasonable um, adjustment, uh, you can just leave the springs in the barrels. And um, clean the arbor. And again, that causes all sorts of fuss with people getting excited about it. But um, I don't think, as I said, I don't class myself as a particularly well uh, practiced, practical clockmaker. But that is actually quite a job. And if you were doing that as a beginner, gosh, I mean, yeah, what a challenge. So I, I think. think there's no oiling before testing. I'm not testing it yet. Okay. No, I've got to put the pallets in yet. Yeah, lot, yeah, always oil before testing. Well, now I'm running the train, so <laughs> I'm sounding like a hypocrite there. It's um, got all the sort of kerosene on it, but yeah, definitely oil, never dry run. I don't believe in the dry run at all. It's a bad idea. 
Yay. Great. I think we sorted. Famous last words. So there we are. Um, so next week, uh, what we've got to do, we've got to harden the tips of the pallets. I mean, I don't think they're that soft, to be honest, but we did heat them up, didn't we, to bend them last week. So that'll be quick in some cold water. De-rust the hands. Put on the regulator. Oh, there we are. There's the, um, the police have arrived because I said that it was okay to clean a clock and leave the spring in the barrel. Somebody's called um, called the authorities. Well, there you go. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did once hear somebody say, I always dry run clocks first. Don't dry run the clock. Oil it. Um, I'm only not oiling it because uh, I just want to check that the springs were hooked on, which they are. So that's fine. The springs are oiled, by the way. I did them with my beloved uh, spray grease, which it's also disappeared in the mayhem. Um, before I put it together, a little light uh, spray of my beloved spray grease. And uh, so I might put a bit more liquid oil on them, but I think they're fine. But yeah, the train, absolutely. Once the pallets are in and it's ticking, uh, checking that it works, uh, I'll oil the whole thing, de-rust the hands. And um, I think we can continue with this next week if we want, or move on to something else. But I think we're pretty much there. Unless I missed something really, really, really obvious like all this bushing that I haven't done. Anyway, thanks very much for bearing with us. Sorry we've run 10 minutes over. Massive thank you, as always, to Team Open Clock Club for uh, keeping the live, live stream. Interesting uh, comments there about uh, Patreon and all that stuff. We will look at that and figure out a way of doing it, but without it being in people's faces. And uh, have a happy new year. Whatever you're doing for new year, early night for us, probably. <laughs> You know, it's like the clock makers. So, um, but anyway, whatever you're doing, have a lovely, happy, safe new year. And all being well, I think we will see you next week uh, and it'll be 2022. So bye for now. And thanks everybody for your support. Right, where's my mouse?